Hello Year 11s. So today we're going to do set 3 paper 3H uh, and this is a calculator paper. So I'm going to start off with question number one. Let's just get this in focus. Okay, so N is between negative 2 and 3 and this symbol here means that N is less than or equal to 3 and this one means that N is bigger than negative 2. So if I write this on a, like a number line, now, you might be used to using like an empty circle for not including it and a filled circle for including it. You don't need to do that, but sometimes it just helps me work out what numbers I'm thinking about. So it can't include negative 2. Uh, now, it also says n is an integer, so it's not going to be like negative 1.5 or negative 1.005 or anything like that. It's got to be negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and it does include 3 because it's less than or equal to 3. So the answers I put on my number line are negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, for this one, x is a number, another number is 9 greater than x, both numbers are whole numbers, the total of the two numbers is less than 60. Find the greatest possible value of x. So what I did for this, um, x is one of the numbers, another number is 9 greater than x, so that means I'm doing x add 9. So then if I was going to combine that and say, well the total of those two numbers, which means that I'm adding them, has got to be less than 60. So then... I say, okay, well, 2x plus 9 has got to be less than 60. And then I solve it just like an equation. I subtract 9 from both sides and I divide both sides by 2 to get 25.5. So x is less than 25.5. And the question says x is a number and both numbers are whole numbers. So x must be a whole number and we want to find the greatest possible value of x. So if it's less than 25.5, then I know the biggest number it could possibly be is 25 because the biggest like, whole number that we've got. So the answer for that one is 25. Okay, question two. Right, for this one, you're going to need to get a compass um, and a pencil. I'm going to do it with a pen so that it can show up a little bit uh, more easily on the screen. And what you need to start off by doing is putting the spiky point of your compass on one of the points. If we're constructing the perpendicular bisector, by the way, it basically means that we're cutting this line in half. And you've just got to remember to do how to do this uh, construction. So I'm going to open the pen and the pointy bit beyond halfway across that line and I'm going to do a sweep like that. Hopefully my pen's going to keep working. So like that. Then I'm going to keep it the same distance away from the pen and the spiky part and then I'm going to do a sweep in this direction. Oh gosh, it slips a little bit. This is what you've got to be careful with. It's tricky with doing this with the pen. There we go. Okay, so you create this kind of shape. And then, once you've done that, you're going to get a ruler. And you're going to draw a straight line between those two. Now, my compass knocks a little bit, so you'll see mine's not exactly halfway along, but you get the idea with that one. So the key thing with this is make sure that you draw your construction lines. Do not ever rub them out, and you can't just draw a line freehand. You need to have this construction line and this construction line and the line down the middle to be able to construct the perpendicular bisector. So that was two marks. Right, this last one, question three. Alex and Ben go to a cafe with some friends. Alex buys four cups of coffee and three cups of tea. He pays a total of £6.95. And Ben buys five cups of coffee and two cups of tea. He pays a total of £7.20. Work, work out the cost of each cup of coffee and the cost of each cup of tea. So for this one, I started off by writing some simultaneous equations. You might be able to work this out logically, but I just thought, okay, do you know what? I'm just going to work out what coffee and tea is by setting up a pair of simultaneous equations. So the first sentence, Alex buys four cups of coffee, I've summarised with by 4C, and three cups of tea, I've summarised with 3T, and that's equal to 695. And then Ben buys five cups of coffee, I've summarised that with 5C plus two cups of tea, 2T, equals £7.20. Then I multiply the first equation by 2 and the second one by 3 so that I can get my t's to be the same number. I could multiply this one by 5 and this one by 4 to get my coffees the same. It doesn't matter either way, it's fine. So then when I multiplied those equations, I got these two. And then to get rid of my t's, I need to subtract my two equations away from each other. Now I've done this one, subtract this one, and this one, subtract this one. That's fine to do because I can see that both that and that number are bigger than these ones. So that gives me 7C, so 15C take away 8C gives me 7C, and 2160 take away 1390 gives me 770. 
Then I divided both sides by seven. So one coffee equals one pound 10. Then I substitute it back into one of these equations. Now it doesn't matter which of these that you substitute it back into. I picked one with the smallest numbers to make my life a bit easier. So I'm doing five lots of coffee, which is one pound 10. So five lots of one pound 10 plus two T equals seven pound 20. Five lots of one pound 10 is five pound 50. Add two T equals seven pound 20. Then I subtracted 550 from both sides and divided both sides by two. So one T costs 85 pence. So then on my answer line, I wrote cup of tea equals zero pound 85 and cup of coffee costs one pound 10. Just be really careful with this. Don't write both units, both pounds and pence. Do one or the other. So it's gonna be one pound 10. You could write 110 pence if you want, but it makes more sense to write it in this form. And don't write this with a pence on the end. It's 0 0.85 or 85 pence if you want to write them both in pence. Okay?